Hola Vida Fama. Hey, How are you doing, up? you guys? I'm going to go through a quick shout out. Um, Dana Duncan from Helena, Oklahoma. Jeremy Estella from Wainwright. Vincent Hazenzal. I'm well, probably butchering that. Well, I don't know. Okay. Jamestown, California. <laughs> Anthony and Martin City, J Mountain County Jail in Florida. Um, and all you guys, new listeners over there, Richmond Detention Facility in Richmond, California, Colorado Department of Corrections, all of you guys that have just joined us, um, Vacaville, California listeners, Damian right. Richardson in Stafford, Virginia, Dauphin County Prison. I think that's what it's called in yeah. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Moreno in East Ham. You are loved. Um, Kenneth Bad Baday or Batty. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say the last name in Michaels. Okay. Um, David in Lawton, Oklahoma. Oh. Um, let's see what in the world. I don't even know how to say it. Cayuga, maybe? Cayuga um, <laughs> County Jail in oh. Auburn, New York. Okay. Hello, you guys. <laughs> What's up? Jaron Smith and Bird. Um, let's see, the G4s in All Red. Come on. Um, I don't hear from them that much, so it's good to hear from you, G4s. Um, settle down and behave right. um, all across the nation, come every on. G4, before I come at you with the chunkla. Look, I got oh. her ready right here. Andale. Okay. Yeah. Um, settle down. Stop the violence. Come Stop on. the smoking. If you want God, if you want change in your life, your mamas are waiting, your wives, yes. your girlfriends, they're praying, they're right. waiting. They want to see you come home. Um, it's a serious yes. thing. Um, but we love you guys. David Castro in Colorado, St. Joseph, Missouri, listeners and watchers, Abraham Olgan and Robert um, Lindstrom in Memorial Unit. Eduardo Bernal is out and doing well for Amen. God. Awesome. It awesome. was so good to hear from him. An ECB in Clements unit. You know, I had a, um, I don't know what type of artboard was on the front of it. And then they all signed in lines, ECB, because we went there right. in like January or whatever. And yeah. I've been looking for that board everywhere for about a week and I haven't been able to find it. Um, but we do love you G5s and 4s over there um, at Clements unit. And I love hearing from you guys. I hope that you are being good. Right. Amen. We got to change things, right? You, right? I know that there's not as many programs for fours and fives, but you can change it from the inside. And I know that there was, um, you know, prayer going on and that kind of thing. I hope that still continues. Yes. You can have Bible study. You can have prayer. You can shout out a scripture, right? You can right. worship God. You can hear each other right from there. Right. Um, you certainly hear each other for everything else. Come on. Right. And so right. Um, you can do that. Um, on October 3rd, honey, you got... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, announce that in just a second. And I do want to okay. say, though, when you're talking about people either being a thermometer and reflecting the temperature Come around on. them or being a thermostat, thermostat. and study. changing the yes. environment around right. them. And, and they have the power. Every single one of right. you guys has the power to okay, change the environment. Say that a little bit better, right? Because you, yeah. you don't understand what we're talking about, right? You can you can go into the temperature of the room right. and take on that temperature. Oh, everybody's here mad. Everybody's right. here shouting. Everybody here is doing this. Yeah. Everybody's smoking. So I'm going to be smoking. Or you can say, you know what? Let me set a different temperature. Come right. on. Right? right. I, don't, I don't like it. It's too hot in here. Let me turn this down. Let me turn yeah. this up. It's too cold in here. And I need to warm it up with the spirit of God. And you can do that. Right. And, it, and it's those people that have allowed God to change their lives. Um, you know, like what you guys watch Sambo, you know, he was a G5 mm. when he got saved and he changed the temperature yeah. and God began to use him. And that carried on out to life right now. You can do that with God in your life and with stepping out and stepping up. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk about changing the temperature, it helps to have a family and a group of support. And so one of the reasons why we put up Vita Nation pins and show you, we want you to know there's a whole lot of people that yeah. have decided to follow after God and they're chasing him. They're doing it, some of them inside the walls and some of them are doing it outside the walls now. Uh, so we are excited always when we have new map pins because it means there's more members in the family. You know, people get excited when there's a new baby in the family. Everybody wants to go see the baby. Uh, so here's where some babies are. Uh, here's a, a, a picture of a cornfield. And I put that up because Des Moines, Iowa just made the map wow. this okay. week. And so if I were to ask you, which state has the most cornfield? fields in America. Now you probably know the answer, right? right? It's, wow. it's, it's Iowa. Okay. Uh, and I'll show you in a second how, what percentage of the whole state is covered with cornfields, which I think is crazy and also interesting. Doylestown, Pennsylvania, Napanock, I'm sure I mispronounced it. Just write us and let me know how badly I butchered it. Jonesboro, Georgia. Uh, and for your information, Iowa has 36% of the state covered in cornfields, wow. which is 
over a third. That's crazy. Uh, here's a visual clue for one of our new map pins. It's the movie Sing. Uh, and our new map pins are Chesterfield, Virginia, and Ossining, New York, which is where Sing Sing Prison is. Okay. Which is cool. We just heard from them, and we've already heard from several people, I think, uh, in the last week. Uh, last visual clue of the day is uh, these mountains here, because we got a map pin in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, Oriskany, probably said it wrong, New York. Boscobel, Wisconsin, and Mount Pleasant, Michigan. So this image here is what Eve was referring to. Uh, we are going to be having our second annual day of deliverance on Friday, October 4th. We're going to have fasting on October 3rd. We hope that you will join us all across the nation. I believe that we're going to have people in the free world, uh, churches, uh, volunteers, and people on the inside all over the United States fasting with us from six in the morning till six in the afternoon uh, to prepare for a day of prayer prayer and deliverance because we're believing God for deliverance on your unit, that God is going to set people free from uh, addiction to substances, uh, bondage to things that have bound them since they were children and teenagers. And um, I have this scripture from Psalm 107, which is really a song about a psalm about prisoners. I love that psalm. And in verse six, it says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Amen. And I fully believe we are going to see deliverance this year. There were many stories last year of miraculous deliverance from demonic oppression that we heard from our listeners. And I'm believing God for even more of that this year. Okay, a little bit of instruction. On the day of fasting, um, you're not just, you know, fasting from food. Um, why don't you, you know, fast from games and right. things like that, filling yourself with fleshly things, you know, movies, things like that. Um, those who are really going to do this. Come on. Um, and, you know, try to pray as much as you can. Fill yourself with worship. Fill yourself with sermons. You know, you got all kinds of Christian podcasts that you can watch. Um, fill, feed your spirit, right? And right. as much prayer as you can. And then we're going to be praying for ourselves and for each other. If you are an ad seg or, yes. you know, wherever you're at, that you're in solitary confinement um, and you have no one else to pray with, of course, you can shout from door to door. But if you're the only one, you can still pray over yourself. Lay your hands on your head. Tell the devil to come out um, to let go of you. You know, it's spirits of anger and, um, you know, lust and, and all kinds of things. So we'll pray yes. for ourselves. We will pray for one another um, and we will see what God does. We're also praying for corrections officers, administration, um, wardens, that kind of thing. They need deliverance too. Right. They need yeah. a change of heart too, right? They need healing too. They need their families um, re restored as well. Like people are going through trouble no matter where they are. Um, you know, and let me tell you a, a story. Like we, we went to Florida uh, for two weeks, like in August, and we went to Lowell, which is the largest women's prison in the United States. And um, in the, the service we had, um, there was a, a, a lady that was a volunteer, but she had been a correctional officer mm. at Lowell. And she was, I think it was at least 20 years that she yeah. was there. She of her own admittance was so harsh that everyone called her Lucifer. Right. Yeah. That's what she was known as. And she admits she had a cold heart. She had a wrong attitude. She didn't have as much she didn't have understanding of, you know, people's lives. And um, now she's full of the love of God and she is a Christian and she's going in as a volunteer. And so God can and will change hearts, right? Yes. And I want you to know that we appreciate every good warden, every good medical worker, every good CO, right. um, you know, all of those that are are, are fair and um, have the love of God or just a good person and treat people well, treat them like people. Yes. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, God is with you. I pray that he bless you abundantly for just treating his children fairly, but we will be praying for that as well. Yes. So I want those that are serious about this, you know, for the fasting and for the prayer on October 4th. And we're looking yeah. forward to it. Last year, we had many, many on the free world outside volunteers join us on these days. And um, I'm believing God, let your people know, um, your families and those loved ones out here so that we can do it again as yeah. the body of Christ. And when we cry out to the Lord as one voice, he answers. Yeah, the last thing I want to say about the day of deliverance is this. The devil thought that the prisons belonged to him, and he has been finding out over the last year and a half as ministries have exploded on the tablet that the prisons are not his turf. It belongs to God. You belong to God. The devil thinks that October is his month because of Halloween. And that's one of the reasons why we want to start the day of deliverance for this month is we are reclaiming the month of October, a month that God created Amen. for right. God. And so we're going to take it back and we're going to start it and we need you to join us.
Amen. All right. So we're going to take a break and then we'll be right back. We have some guests. Hey guys, we're back. We're excited to have in studio with us today, Pastors Juan and Ruthie Martinez. Dr. Uh, Love. Dr. Dr. Love. Watch out. From hey. Get Rap Church in uh, Spring, Texas. I mean, we say Houston. When, yeah, yeah. when yeah. we're talking to guys, we always say they're in Houston, but it's actually spring. Yeah. I'm going to put up the address here, the service times. Many of you also know him, of course, from This Is Real, which is on the tablets. Yeah. Uh, and so we're so excited to have you guys with us today in honor. Dude, well, it's thank super you. awesome. Yeah, no, it's super awesome. I was thinking I get baby Ruth here too. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. Yes. Let me tell you, you guys, uh, I mean, you have an anointing. Because, <laughs> because, because Ruthie just doesn't say, like we were just somewhere on television. They were like, hey, I mean, this big, where yeah. people would see a big opportunity and they yeah. were like, hey, would you? And she's like, oh, no. And I'm like, it's a big oh, opportunity. I said, so, it, I said it nicer. <laughs> yeah, you said it nice. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, 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 the answer was a, oh, right. no. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and if she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to usually, right? Yeah. So uh, when she's sitting here today on the show with you guys, I'm like, man, they ha she has an anointing. She has an yeah. anointing. You know, because, um, and awesome. it's exciting to be in the studio with you yeah. guys. Because yeah. most of the time we're hearing you know, oh my God, you know, the people get out of prison yeah. and they're like, man, that's one, you know, we want to see and real Vida, you know, all the yes. time. So we're always hearing. So to be here with you guys yeah. and, and, and you guys be, you know, the beauty of it is that we've gotten to know you outside of the studio right. uh, as we keep building this relationship yeah. and you guys are just real. Nice. You're real me that. Yeah. You know? yeah. so, so, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. It's yeah, a good it's weird awesome. how God gives, when God gives the name, it suits you, whether at the church or what have you. Yeah, so totally. many times, you know, yeah. I traveled forever and I spoke in churches all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times, well, I don't know the name even because I just spoke in another one yesterday. So it's going to, sure. but it, God will somehow incorporate it in the sermon. Yeah. Like in the topic and it's like, and they're like, well, that's, yeah, wow, you know, yeah. um, it's so, you know, we went to like friendly Baptist church and I'm like, everybody's so friendly. And they're like, well, and they were actually friendly in yeah. this school. Yeah. So we have so much to talk about. I'm so yeah. glad that Ruthie is here because it so matters, you know, your yes. marriage made in heaven, uh -huh. although you know that, you know, it, everything ain't perfect. And we hopefully we'll get to talk a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. about that, that there, yeah. there were struggles when oh, you absolutely. have to fight for it. You are, have made your own way, right. you know, your own habits, your own culture, your own customs, even though you're both Hispanic, you're still different. Oh, totally. Yeah. You know oh, what totally. I mean? And yeah. so, so, um, so it's a totally different thing. Even yes. that, you know, introduced to jalapenos by this woman. All right. <laughs> and, and they kill parasites. So that's good, right? And so, um, but there's so much to talk about. And so let's see what we can get out. Right? Yeah. I, want, I want to give him his present first. You want to give okay. him his present? Oh, okay. man. You know, I've you know, been excited about this because once you point, you know, I almost looked at the bag earlier. He's like, well, don't look at the bag. Well, I hope I didn't create unrealistic expectations. Okay. Oh, no, no, listen. Listen. Joker, you listen. Know. Oh, I know. I know. Yes. So, you know, I mean, I love to give gifts. And yeah. you're a gift giver. I, I know that giver. about you already yes. just in the little little bit of time we got to spend together. So you gave me gifts last night, which were awesome. And actually I'm wearing one of them right here. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. so you so, should talk about my shirt story. for a yeah. second. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. So, so let me tell you something. When they were on, on, on This Is Real, which is kind of funny because when I say This Is Real, I think Real Vida, you know, because, <laughs> you know, in Espanol, right? The whole This Is Real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, um, you know, he was, man, we got into this great dialogue and all of a sudden he just started talking about Jesus and us being his pit crew. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we have Gerardo who is, uh, you know, in our studio most of the time as mm -hmm. well. And he uh, also does a lot of the graphics and all that for our shirts. Yeah. And so he, usually I give him a thought and then he kind of does his thing, right? Yeah. In this case, you gave him a thought. Cool. So out of that story of wow. about being the pit crew, he came up with the Hevican shirt with the car stuff, the 39 striped life. He added that nice. there as a car thing because it was 39 lashes and you really don't, you wow. know, the ultimate sacrifice. Wow. So you live the 39 striped life, you live the mm. ultimate sacrifice. Wow. Right? And yeah. then in the back, you want to turn that thing around? Yeah. yeah, yeah oh, yeah. this is the beautiful part. The back, because That's we're so Hevicans, cool. Jesus', Jesus is pit crew. Come yeah. on. So when you're wearing that, you know you're part of his pit crew. Come right. on. That's good. That's so, so I feel good. like you had on, out on me last night. I was wearing this shirt all day. I had no clue any of that good stuff, but you were saving it for the podcast. Hey. I, know, <laughs> I know how you are. He knew what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You are. Sold. But it's so good, you guys. Yeah. I mean, now that you got there, right? Because <laughs> um, it's so true. Yes. You know, yes. and that we're all a little different. We got little different specialties, even yes. as a ministry. Yes. And 
And I, um, one of our girls just did a podcast and and it was on the zebras. Yeah. And how when they travel, um, you know, they hook up together with, you know, like elephants who are strong, who dig water holes. W- you know, one of them's got Ooh. good eyesight. The other one does. That's a good, so that's they a each good other one. If they're, Cause they're, they're going to eat all the food in this one place. Yeah. And they need to migrate so they can keep moving forward and yeah. keep progressing and journey. keep eating yeah. in their journey. But they cannot do it without someone who is different from Ooh. them. They need and each so other. we were comparing it to like how Hog Mob came and, and they got their little posse and they're yeah. a little different. Yeah, they yeah. work with Real Vida and here's, this is real and Real yeah. Vida and yeah. we're all different. But we want to progress. Come on. Absolutely. We want people to keep Absolutely. growing and eating of the Lord. And get and the, safely to the their destination. The only way yeah. to do it. The only way to do it. Is it, to hook up. It was, right? you know, mm. you know, like if you're in a, you know, lock and stuff, you, you know, you're death row, you get your last meal. You got to yeah. really think the power of what you're saying right now is Jesus's last meal. Let's say he had his last request. Yeah. He was like, for y'all to get along. Right. Yeah. yeah. For right. y'all Come to on. actually Freedom. unite and Come use yes. each other's right. strengths, right? That's what where we have to get to because, right. because the world's going to act like the world, but we can't act like the world, right? right? And usually, yeah. I think we were saying before this, acids agitate, right? Yeah. So usually right, the right. opposite is going to agitate you a little bit unless you really realize there's a bigger purpose than the agitation, right. you know? Right. So that's important. I love hanging out with it, you guys. It, uh, it's awesome. And so I, I really had a thought as you're explaining my shirt. <laughs> this has nothing to do with ministry. A bunch of people that have think. Have you ever been to a NASCAR race? A NASCAR? Never. Neither have I. I say that we go and we take the whole posse and we go to a NASCAR race. Oh, look at what just happened. Crew. Look at what just <laughs> yeah. happened. Come on. Right. Is it? So, <laughs> That's crazy. And I'm buying your ticket and here's your gift. Wow. Okay. 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 Hold on. pull it out. Yeah. Oh, hold of course. On. Oh, man, well, we're making is, all kinds of noise this here. Is it's exciting. all good. It's all but good. they understand the noise on this yeah. one, right? Because yeah. they're yeah. like, oh, it's a gift. It's acceptable. Yeah. Oh, man, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> we got to make it exciting. We just can't pull it out. You want me to pull it out now or just it's one more, one more gonna... tissue? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Dr. Dr. Love. Dr. Love. Dr. Love. Wow. Okay, so I want now for our producer, Chris, to tell you the backstory on this image here. So, okay, Jeremy wanted me to, he's like, man, can we get an image of Dr. Love? I'm like, so, okay, I go to ChatGPT. I'm like, hey, ChatGPT, I need you to draw me a picture of Dr. Love. Love. ChatGPT said, well, well, describe Dr. Love and I'll draw it. And I said, well, just use your imagination. <laughs> and that is what ChatGPT gave like, me. It actually looks like... It I know, looks it's like one. one. Yeah. It's really oh, one. Man, uh, <laughs> I need it the glasses. Coat of many colors. <laughs> it's definitely coat of many colors. Definitely yeah. bright. Always smiling. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Oh, I love it. Thank you guys so much. I like every. You guys are like so pros at the AI. Yeah. I, I like gifts that have some thought. Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, gifts. You, you get gifts. You know. Yeah. And and they're good too. But at the end of the day, when there's some thought behind it, yeah. Oh um, man, it just you know that that it was well thought out. You know, right. I feel like oh, this was thought out. So so <laughs> three or four days ago, I asked Chris to come up with that, and he texted it to me, and I nearly lost my mind because it looks so <laughs> much like you. So love. anyway, oh, come on, man. okay. Well, we're having Dr. fun, love. but I know Mama Eve's ready to get to the meat. Let's so. get to the nitty gritty. Yeah, right? let's do it. Um, I, I I love that stuff. So um, I think okay. Let's start out with um. Ruthie says she never speaks, and I want her to speak um, about your childhood and your growing up. Like, what was that like? Okay. Well, I was born in Merced, California, and I was there till I was about 11. But during that time, as a little girl, uh, when I was around my mother, I never felt loved. Didn't feel loved. And I remember questioning my father and just telling him, I said, um, Dad, you know, I feel like mom doesn't love me. He goes, make me hot. I never want to hear you say that. But as time went on, I always got the the backlash all the time. It was always me. So anyways, long story short, my mother and father divorced when I was about uh, 10 years old. And the abuse started happening. And I grew up bitter, angry, um, resentful. Um, my father came to Houston to work in Houston. And my mom was struggling in California. He just told her, why don't you just come to Houston and we'll just start over. So they did. And we ended up in Houston. That's how we ended up in Houston. And then after that, um, a year later, my mom said, Houston is informed me. And she left all of us, my siblings with my father. And my dad raised us. So Mm -hmm. I've been in Houston since I was about 12 years old. 
Wow. And was there a God in your home? We went to church when we were little, but it wasn't something they did all the time. Okay. It wasn't something that we did. Um, when we came to Houston, my dad tried going to church, but that wasn't successful either. So we never went to youth. We never went to church. We would go maybe once a year. If, and what kind of church was it? It was a Pentecostal church. It was okay. a very small church. Um, there was about 20 people in there and we would just go here and there, but it was nothing that was established in our home. And so did you, you know, end up doing drugs, partying, any of those kind of things? Yeah. I did. I did. Um, I started hanging around with the bad crowd okay. and eventually I just fell into that. But I always say like, I wasn't somebody, and I, I know that this is weird, but I wasn't somebody that was doing drugs all the time. It was just here and there. Okay. But I did. I fell into that. I started hanging around with the wrong, wrong crowd. Right. I think that, you know, being raised in, in church, like my dad was a Pentecostal pastor, no matter what, the, I got out of the house so early, but those things got in, in me. They, mm -hmm. they, they gave you pause to where you didn't go mm -hmm. all the way like other people did. Mm -hmm. um, so there was something still was happening, um, even though it was messed up. There was messed up Christians, messed up people yeah, around us, right. but yet we got something. You know, right. we got a boundary yeah. um, that others did not have. It, it says the Holy Spirit is the restrainer. And so yeah. even just being around, it like pulled you back from where you would have been otherwise, probably. But nevertheless, you did not have a personal relationship with Jesus mm -mm. at any point uh, no. in that early part of your life. All right. Okay. And so we heard, we heard Juan's testimony, but I think it's mostly he was already grown, all of that. Um, and you can see that if you haven't seen that on um, This Is Real or Real Vida, we have his testimony mm -hmm. up also. Go back and watch it because it is yes. so, so good. Um, and so, but I would like to know a little bit about your childhood. What was that like? Well, um, growing up, I think my parents got divorced when I was like eight. Okay. So, you know, Puerto Rican household, you know, everything's a party. You know, Columbus Day is a party. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we don't know the holiday. We don't know the, it was a party. Yeah. <laughs> and so no matter what, on the holidays, you're partying, you know, pretty much from Thanksgiving, you know, parrandas, you know, the mm -hmm. from uh, Thanksgiving all the way to like the Day of the Reyes, because we're going to celebrate Christmas and the Three Kings all the okay. way right. January 9th. Right. So you're partying from before and you're just going house to house. Ooh. So I'm like a kid getting dropped off, you know, sleeping in beds while everybody's partying and all the noise and then they pick you up, take you to the next one. So that's most of my life. Party, party, party. Um, they get divorced. My mom uh, tried the best she can to introduce me to God. And I think I had at least an introduction um, through Catholic Church, right? Did my communion, my confirmation. I knew my Our Father who are in heaven at the okay. Padre Nuestro Eterno Cielo Santificado. You know, mm -hmm. but it was like just this repetitive thing that yeah, you would right. say. And everybody though was partying. So it's like we went to church and then, you know, my dad never went and my mom was trying to take me to church. Um, and uh, everybody, you know, everybody's still snorting lines, you know, mm -hmm. doing all that. Everybody's selling drugs. But you went to church on Sunday, you know, because right. you put the little water and, and then you're good. Or you say right. the Our Father and then wow. you're good. Yeah. So there's a form of godliness. You have to right. deny the power. And uh, the, the crazy part was, you know, this guy would say things like, you know, God is love or whatever, right? But to me, when I went to the streets, because at, at eight, let's say about 12, 13, at 13, I'm already selling masculines and I'm already selling mm -hmm. drugs. Because I gravitated to the street because I felt like between the movies, the rap songs, and the people on the corner, yeah. that looked like truth because it's on the radio, it's on the movie and the thing. Wow. And then the God looked like a lie because he's saying he's a loving father, yet I don't have a loving, you know, I don't think he's a loving father. Where's my father at? Like, he yeah. ain't even here. He, hey, he's he never leaves you. I'm like, no, he left. <laughs> you yeah. know, like yeah, wow. just little things sure. that I could kind of recollect, but... The interesting part is that at that age, I, I the lie was true. I thought it was true. And the truth was a lie to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like that can yeah. exist. And I actually thought that everybody, I never knew this side existed. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I didn't know there was like people who were followers of Christ. You know, I thought like God somewhere far away. Yeah. Because I do remember like, like, like our father who are in heaven. Cause I didn't know you could actually talk to him. Mm -hmm. I would say the our father, but it was with this our father, you know, and, uh, and he was far away and hopefully mm. he would hear me. And so then I would go to the streets and because people ask me all the time when you were doing all that and carrying guns, 13, all the stuff like, well, did you feel bad? And I'm like, no, never. Because I, I honestly thought everybody did it. 
Yeah. Right. And I was yeah. just being an asset. You know, I was the, you know, I was getting you high. So I was giving mm -hmm. you laughter. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, yeah. I was, I was giving yeah. you life, which was the total lie. Right. So at 13, 14, I think at 14 years old, 13 started selling mescalines, 14 years old, I started selling cocaine. I'm mm -hmm. doing rails in high school, like on my desk. Man. And so, uh, you know, uh, Scarface didn't help, right? You thought right. that's true. Mm -hmm. right. And so, you know, everybody's trying to be, yeah. oh, my friends, wow. that's, that's, that's what we were looking up to, right? We yeah. all want to be Scarface. Yeah. Um, we all want to be whatever they're rapping about, right? Oh, whatever, Jay-Z, whatever. You're like, that's yeah. what you want to be. Like, you play the song to actually influence you to go yeah. do whatever the song is saying. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my my childhood, pretty much. I'm, I'm a, I think I started, I went from like selling on the corner to, uh, well, no, started as selling in high schools. So I was taking over like high schools. So we would go to like mm -hmm. Weehawken High, Hoboken High, all these high schools at lunchtime and distribute drugs mm -hmm. to all the like, dealers yeah. that you had in other high schools. Yeah. Right. And then that gravitated to the street. And then I winded up in my early years um, selling drugs, I guess, in a building and kind of pro prostitution house. Mm -hmm. So I had a bunch of prostitutes that kind of did all the work and then came back and then, you know, you sold all the drugs there. And so that's kind of most of my childhood until my early years before the rest of the testimony takes place. Yeah. Um, most of my life, I just kind of thought it was the thing to do. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. It was the norm. It yeah. was a norm. You wear mm -hmm. a fitted hat, some Tims, you got a 22 in your boot, you know, maybe a nine in your back, you know, and that was like the thing to do because it was cool. Yeah. Like you weren't thinking of consequences. Right. You didn't really think there was consequences. Like you did. Right. And I don't even know if like mm -hmm. I thought it were bad. Like yeah. I just thought like that was just a part of it. Like I don't understand when people complain about, oh, the snitch, this and that. It's like part of the Monopoly board, you know, right. don't <laughs> pass go, you know, don't collect $200. Yeah. So I right. always thought that way. Like, so... And getting locked up, most of my younger years, you know, I, I bailed myself out. I have friends that bailed me out. So I never really caught the lesson until, right. like, you know, I started facing bigger time. Mm. Right. I want I want to point that out, though, the the culture, right? The the movies, the music yeah. that are such a powerful influence. Um, that is also what, you know, Pastor Rocha from Modesto, that's, he yeah. said the movie. Can't wait the to movie. meet him. The colors. Colors, oh, he so... said, when that movie came out. That became like everything that it was the identity that he chose to be. Yeah. When that came out. And immediately everybody's a gang member. Immediately everybody's moving towards that. So Yeah. I, I think I think that's so growing up Puerto Rican, you know, I, I with my mom always had plastic fruit. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, yes. like, right? Plastic fruit. Yeah, we had an orange tree. Everybody tried to eat. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 totally. You're, you're chewing on the grape. You know, it's plastic. You know, your mom's upset yeah. because you've pulled a couple out. Yeah, yeah. And then we moved, you know, we, we, we moved up to uh, porcelain fruit. And so, you know, now it's shiny, yes. right? Yes. You remember, you, you chipped it and you got in trouble because you chipped it. Yeah, and so I'm thinking like, Funny. if if now when I married Ruthie and she came out with real fruit, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Like, you're going to put real fruit here? Like, she's like, yeah, you eat it. <laughs> so even though that sounds really funny, you know, it, I really thought that way. I was like, why do you have that there? And and as, of course it would be to eat it. But I'm thinking most of my life, it was just for show. Right, yeah. And, and it, It mm. looked like fruit, but it really wasn't oh. fruit. So, so yeah, I, I hear the. Right I hear, Come on, so, so, so yeah. I, 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 I'm always thinking, Eesh. you know, in real life, in life here, I go like, man, that that had no nutrition. It did nothing for Come me. Come on. But yet, when, now I get to peel a banana back and eat it and go like, mm, this is good. And so I feel like most, like in life, if if at some point if I put real fruit and plastic fruit. And it doesn't matter who you are on this planet. At some point, you're going to want to choose the real fruit. Come on. Right. Right. But if we're all looking like plastic fruit and porcelain right. fruit, Come on, then right. there's no different. That's, that's my, when I, that's growing right. up, when you ask about my younger ages, I don't, I don't, I'm seeing these people, you know, argue, yell, cuss each other out. You know, I'm like, okay, that's normal. So I guess mm -hmm. we all do that. We right. go to church to say sorry for the way we acted all week long. Yes. And then we, just, we repeat it all over again right. Sunday. There's no transformation. And then I go and I see these dudes smoking and they laughing and having a good time. And I'm thinking like, well, they're having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then they're like pulling out a knot of money. And my mom's like, oh, you know, mijo, I'm trying to make it, you know. And then my aunts are like on food stand. They're like, I'm trying to make it. Yeah. And I don't understand. I'm like, well, everybody goes to church. And I'm like, all right, well, this is just life. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, you fall into that routine. And then you, that's where you start getting this identity. Well, I will never be like, you start making inner vows, right? Like, right. Oh, I'm not right. going to be like that. Right. So, so 
you know, I told my mom in the 20s, I got to tell my mom this. I go, mom, because my mom tried the best she could, you know, you know, trying to be a single mom and all that stuff. And she came and she would give me like 150, 200 bucks and she would go, go buy school clothes, you know? And so I was like, okay, mom. And so at 20, I got to tell her this, what I'm about to tell you. And so I would take that 200 and I had a good friend, Mike, who he didn't have a dad because we had a bunch of friends. I think we had a couple friends that had dads and everybody else had no dads. Mm. His dad died. My dad left, right? So we have no dads and we're having to figure out what a man is. Yeah. yeah. And so we're all getting what a man is according to TV, movie, and this mm. thing, right? Right, right. No, no, there's no other man that's showing, Me. right? And they're coming out of church on Sunday. So it's yeah. like, okay, wow. so right. you go to church on Sunday and you snort coke on Monday. Right. Right? So in your brain, right? Or you just party however. And so I told them, mom, because we used to take that. We're selling drugs. And I'm I'm stuffing money. I don't, don't know where to hide money. I got plastic files because that's how we sold it back then. And uh, and I, I'm coming home with tons of um, leather bombers, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And my mom, she doesn't know any better. Wow. So she's like, oh, my God. And I said, mom, you know, I got a sale. <laughs> I got on sale. Yeah. Goodwill. <laughs> Goodwill. And, uh, and she's like, you bought all this? Wow. And so then, you know, yeah. And then Mike helped me. And then Mike is at his house saying, oh, you won't believe what, you know, Juan's <laughs> mom. Yeah. But they call, call me Johnny back then. You know, Johnny's mom. And uh, and so we just played each other's mom through the mm. houses. Wow. And, and bought all this stuff. Wow. Right? So I'm selling drugs on the side. And this whole time, my mom's thinking that she's, you know, I'm taking care of my son, which is, I guess, kind of cool in a way, right? Because my mom, that made me feel even better. Like, look at my mom. She's happy. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Wow. Wow. So I need to go back to this because yeah. it's so good. You mm. know what he said? It, it yeah. came off of something, right? It looked like real fruit. We, You know, all us Hispanics, mm. I don't know if white people did that or not, but us yeah. Hispanics, um, they had fake <laughs> had orange fruit. trees and fake, yeah. you know, like yeah. sitting in pots and stuff like that and, and then fake fruit on the table and whatever. Yeah. But um, it looked like real fruit. Right. But um, it wasn't. And we were just talking about that by podcast. I've been trying to teach our new baby Christians behind bars what to expect because they're coming in. And those that have never known God, which is one of the questions he had for you, never known God, mm. think that, you know, Christians got it together and they're not sinning and they're not making mistakes. And they're certainly not on purpose <laughs> living in these crazy right. ways. Um, and then they come in and they're shocked. And uh, some of my seggers um, have gotten out and now they're in general population and it's the first time they've ever been able to go to church, period. Yeah. And then they get there and they expect the book of Acts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's not. I mean, they literally said yeah. that and then it's not. And they're, they're devastated by it. And so we've been trying to teach them. Um, and, and even the fact that the scripture says that even if I give my body to be burned and even if I give to the poor and even if I do all these things, but I have not loved. Yeah. And, and you're like, but wait a minute, watch out. Cause why, why would somebody be given to the poor if they don't have love? Like what is their motivation? It looks like real fruit, right. but you can Come have on. fruit Let's that isn't. You need an and, organ. And what did he <laughs> say? Listen, he said that there's no nutrition in it. Yeah. Listen, so if all you're doing is entertaining yourself with smoke and mirrors and lights and, um, you know, music and raps, even if it's Christian and, and all this stuff, it, it looks like real fruit, but there's no nutrition in it. So yeah. you wonder why I'm still failing and I'm still not being able to climb up the mountain and I'm still in this valley and I'm still not overcoming and I'm still hurting and I'm still addicted because all you're eating is fake fruit. Come on. Mm -hmm. Nice girl. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so come oh, on. Oh. And I guess let's bring us to that question, right? Yeah. We, you know, he was asking you, um, you know, he said, I want to ask him, like, when yeah. you came in, like, when you came in fully was really after prison, right? We, when I, Gave to Christianity myself and God in and prison. And, well, yeah. I know you in got prison. saved in prison, but this is the question that I had because we've been yeah. thinking and talking about sure. this a lot. Um, so when you get out of prison and you're on fire for God yeah. and you're ready to go, yeah. were you surprised when you first found out that the Christian world, the Christian world, that they're not perfect? Okay, great. So when I was hearing you talk, I wanted to speak into that a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, because okay, so when I get out, I want to uh, and so I and let me let me let me backtrack a little because I mm. feel like this has to be mentioned, right? Because you know there is a jailhouse Christianity, whatever. But I feel like in prison, it starts in prison. I used to tell some of the guys, "Hey, you know, you're waking up at eleven, you're coming back." And most of those guys did go back, yeah. right? Because I was like, "You have to change here. Like, you can't right. strap up." So I I couldn't strap up anymore to go beat the dude up in the bathroom. Like, those are things that I'm used to. And like now I'm like feeling like a punk. Like all those feelings, yes. mm -hmm. I had to kind of renew my mind on in prison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Come in on. prison, Preach right? That. It ain't like, yeah. like I, okay, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to still whoop you. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to still... No, no. In prison. It got so crazy for me that I one time went to strap up and uh, to help this other guy who committed suicide while he was out here. And uh, all the gangs got around me and they were like, yo, New York, you don't have to fight. And I was like, what? And they were like, nah, we see what you're doing. So even if that, God had my back. Wow. Amen. And... Um, it was like being bold enough to say, like, on the third floor, everybody would rock and fight there, right? Because the guards were on, like, heroin. And so uh, they would go up there and have, like, a fight club uh, where they use crash dummies to fight each other. And at that, I literally had to be bold enough in prison, because we're doing the tr prayer by the tree in the hallway, to say, yo, guys, at, at, from this time to this, I don't care what you do after this time, but from this time, this is the, because I was in the faith-based pod, and mm -hmm. it, we were all in the same building. I was like, this is ours. So you can't do that. Bold enough to say that. And people get upset and be like, we smoking the cigarettes. Like, you ain't smoking it this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We praying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you can come back after three. And so that kind of boldness starts there. When I come out, um, I'm literally thinking, so this is a true story. I kind of go, okay, I got to, I got to go back to all these places. I got to, you know, Jonah got spit out of the mouth of the whale. I got spit out of the mouth of the jail. And I got to mm. go back to Nineveh and tell everybody, right? So I, I get out and I I don't know about computers and stuff. And so, you know, me and Ruthie are talking and she's like, you know, she's actually the one that kind of pushed me like to go. She's like, well, let's go back to the town. And I was like, I don't know nobody there. And God orchestrates the whole thing. But before that, I'm typing out all the people like Tim Walker, uh, Kerry Job, all these people. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to come out. I'm going to get everybody to come with me <laughs> and we're going to go whoop on the devil. Yeah. So I'm sending messages to all these people. You know, they're sending me back contracts and, yeah. and, and I'm like, I'm yeah. like, what what's kind of going on? Want? I'm like, I'm like, what is going on? I, and so I'm sending them, Hey, this town is so dope and you know, we need to unite all the Christians. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm believing this, right? You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, I do. I'm yeah. like sending everybody emails yeah. going, we need to unite cause we're we need to go there and stop <laughs> evil. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they're thinking, this dude is crazy. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm like, I just got out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. I literally lived my life that way. Yes. So when I get out, you know, Ruthie, you remember this? She's no, like, yeah. she's, I go, I got to get all the, so whoever was a Christian, I'm trying to send them an email yeah. mm. to like, come meet me for lunch because we right. need to go do this. Right. So yeah. I'm, uh, they, <laughs> of course, they answered the thing and I go, this is so weird. They all want, <laughs> I got to pay them to come <laughs> here and this is really weird. And I go, don't take care that everybody's dying over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, right. And so yeah. then we wind up, um, we just winded up doing it out. God orchestrated it because Ruthie and this girl named Amber back then, they were like, she goes, why don't you just go? I'm like, back to the towns? I go, I don't know nobody there. I don't know no pastors. I go, who's going to listen to me? I mean, everybody else is sending me this whole list. Mm -hmm. So anybody can listen to me. She goes, I think you should go. So we get in a car and literally start driving towards one of these places. I know nobody. Mm -hmm. I have no plan. And a girl that I used to sell to uh, sell meth to that, you know, took over this town, she says, hey, why don't you meet my pastor? The pastor meets with me. By the time I get to the town, wow. I have a lunch meeting and no I'm doing way. a big old that's outreach crazy. in the park. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Isn't that wild? Oh, wow. So even God. though, it, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, yeah, even though yeah. I had this crazy thought, Man. God still made Worked a way. Yes, yeah. he does. I mean, we did this huge outreach. I think 1,500 people came Man. out. Well, the wow. first thing I ever did, 1,500 people. I'm like, wow. man, this is going to be easy. <laughs> so I thought. Yes. So I thought, right? So mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Amazing. Wow, yeah. God yeah. works in such mysterious, great ways. Okay. So yeah. much to talk about. Right. So what? <laughs> what well, I was going to, I wanted to go back to Ruthie for a minute and just ask, how did you come to God? Uh, yeah. Um, how I came to the Lord. This well, is a good story. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son, he was in the system since he was 14, mm. right? Um, at the age of, I want to say 18, he went to prison. And Mind you, I would always go visit him if he was in Dallas and San Antonio and Crockett and he was in all these places. And then finally I told him, Jonathan, if you get locked up one more time, and he's known by JP, said, if you get locked up one more time, I'm not going to go visit you because I can't keep taking Josh with me. Mm -hmm. He cries every time. And he was a baby at the time. He was about two years old and he Sorry already knew and he wanted to mm -hmm. take his brother with him. And I said, Josh, if I could put your brother in my pocket and walk out of here with him, I would. And it was getting so mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. But one day he 
he was 19 years old, got incarcerated again. And of course, I didn't go see him. And his letters were so bitter and angry for months. And then one day he sends me a letter um, with scripture on it. And he was just so positive in this letter. Mm. Wow. And uh, he said, Mom, he goes, find a church. Wow. Uh, Because he knew the life I was living. I was living a life of hell. Didn't own a Bible. Didn't know how to pray for myself nor my kids. And I remember one day I just took it at heart. And I went to a Christian bookstore and Mm. purchased my Bible because he would send me scriptures and I had no clue what he was saying. Wow. Mm. So I wrote him and I said, hey, I went and bought a Bible and he, and he would get excited wow. and go and tell the guys from the faith-based Man. dorm mm. because later I found that out. Mm. And then he would write me scriptures and then he said, um, mom, find a church. And then one day, you know, I went to a graduation party, my friend's graduation party for her son. And she goes, hey, you want a drink? And I said, no. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, well, no, I'm going to church tomorrow. And she goes, you're going to church? And I said, yeah, I'm going to church <laughs> because I had drove around and found a church and I wanted to go and write my son, hey, I went to a church. Wow. So I, I went to the church that uh, the next day. So I didn't drink because I, I wanted change. Something inside yes. of me wanted oh, that change. Yeah. And I went to the church and I felt good about it. And I walked out, but I still had, you know, going to church and Finally, I wrote my son and I said, look, I found this church and I'm going to be going to this church. And I would go once in a while. And when I would tell my dad about it, because my dad had been praying for me, mm. he would go to the church. Wow. And he goes, I'm going to go with you, Miha. And I said, okay, dad, are you sure? And I go, they only speak English. He goes, <laughs> no, I'm going to go. And my dad mm. was the one that would go with me, Wow, yeah. you know, but it was actually my son who was wow. incarcerated, who was something. praying for me, writing wow. scriptures. And that should be encouraging to all you guys listening, Absolutely. you know, and, and we are actually having a whole lot of that mm. where, you know, they're introducing the family to the podcast, the pod, you know, they're watching yeah. out here, they're going to church, they're starting Bible studies, they're serving God there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you can affect Absolutely. Thousands of millions from where you're at. You affect oh, totally. one person, yeah. you know. So if you're out there listening wow. and you're believing for your family members to come to the Lord and you're writing them letters and scriptures, continue. Don't stop because I'm a testimony of that. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay, well then we've got to get into that right. story. Okay, okay, can I give you the opposite of so what's okay. happening yes, in San That's Tennessee. what we want to hear. Yes. Okay, so simultaneously. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I one day meet this guy. He comes in. Now, remember, I have a son named Jonathan who I haven't been in his life. You know, that whole time, right? So, like, I was just this jacked up dad. You know, this is what God can do in your life, right? Because I'm just not there. I I haven't seen him in 19 years. Wow. In walks in this kid, Mineral Wells facility. I'm sitting in a bunk and his name is Jonathan. Mm. Mm. So, obviously, I go, oh, here's my chance. You know, I'm fired up for the Lord. I go, here's my chance. I get to... I get to disciple, I get to father Jonathan, even though he's not my Jonathan. Right. In my mind, he was my Jonathan. Oh, come on. So, so I go, I'm going to start walking with him in the wow. yard. So I start discipling this Jonathan. Mm. Simultaneously, he's writing his mom. Every mm. time, so I'm praying for his mom in our prayer circle because he's in my prayer circle at lunch. So, wow. so we're by the tree and he's like, he's like, uh, Oh, he's like, hey, my mom got a Bible. Mm. And so we're praying for Ruthie. And then, hey, my wow. mom's at a church. And we're all like, Man. yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So we're all excited about this, right? Wow. Yeah. And we're praying heavy for this woman named Ruthie, who's Jonathan's mom. Mm. You fast forward. Mm. And now that's my wife. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's so unbelievable. It's so <laughs> wow. amazing. Yeah. So, so, so question, right? Okay, yeah. So how long were you guys like, you started to write to each other. Yeah. And how long She's was gonna, it she before tell you Because there's some out. funny parts uh, on this. Okay. So well, what could... happened with that is my son would write me a letter. He says, mom, I have a friend here. And he just needs a pen pal. He doesn't want to write to his old friends. And I know that you have a lot of girlfriends out there, a lot of friends, you know, give them my, the address. Yeah. Give them my friend's address so they can write him. He just needs a pen pal, not a relationship. And, you know, I would read him, my son's letters and I would put him down. I'm like, I'm not going to give my friends that information. I don't know <laughs> if this is a rapist, a murderer, <laughs> right. well, you know. So then I would put the letters away and then he would write me and say, mom, did you, yeah. And I'm like, John, Jonathan, I'm not going to do that. And one day I was at church because I was already, 
I gave my life to the Lord and I was in church. And wow. I remember that um, my pastor had preached on when you pray, believe in what you're praying for and receive it like it's already yours. And I already had been in church for a while. And we then me and my sisters were at Chuck E. Cheese. And I said, hey, have you guys ever written to somebody who's incarcerated? They're like, girl, you better not. They just want you to <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. So then I took it to heart what they were saying. They're girl, are you writing somebody who's incarcerated? And I'm like, no. I'm just asking. So then I go and I tell my dad, I said, dad, do you believe that? Because mind you, my son has been going in and out, in and out, and there was never no change. Mm -hmm. So then I said, dad, do you really believe that people who are incarcerated, like they change? And he goes, Miha, he told me in Spanish, he goes, God is building up an army in there and they're mm -hmm. coming out on fire for the Lord and they're wow. pulling yeah. people out of the same <laughs> yeah, thing that dad. they were in. Oh, yeah. So oh, then wow. I remember being at home and I already, I wow. was at church and and um, my sisters couldn't believe the change. And I remember praying and I said, God, bring me my spiritual leader, bring me my husband. Mm. I said, together we're going to serve you. And of course I wasn't so specific. So now I tell women, hey, when you pray, pray specific. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm a pastor. Why a pastor? <laughs> <laughs> so I started praying that and my sisters would always say, you're just at church and you're just at, at work. Like, when are you ever going to find a husband. I said, you know, God, God does things in mysterious ways yes, and he's he going to bring my yeah. husband. Come on. Yeah. And long story short, I just started praying and seeking the Lord. And then one day I get a letter from a guy who's incarcerated and it's the same facility. And I open it up because I think something's happening to my son. I'm like, this man doesn't, how yeah. does he know my address? So I open it up and I'm just looking through the letter and I see my son's name on the bottom and I read it. He goes, um, just writing you to let you know your son's doing good. And he's telling me about my son. So, okay. I said, okay, he's great. So I go up to the beginning of the letter and the letter says, hey, I've never done this before, but God put it in my heart to write mm -hmm. you and tell you about your son. And then the crazy part about it is that I received a letter on a Monday or Tuesday because I'll never forget. And he put a scripture on this and he goes, God gave me the scripture for you. Well, I went to Bible study on Wednesday and my pastor kept preaching, kept preaching on the same scripture. And it was this scripture. And wow. I, I didn't put two and two together, right? And it happened for months. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So then I was like, okay. And the pastor goes, well, I don't know, but this scripture is for somebody here. Wow. So I go home, look at the letter and it's the same scripture. And it kept happening. Mm. And one day I just started writing him. Yeah. And, and let me let me preface this because wow. I know sometimes some people listen and they're like, yeah, that's why I'm trying to get a pen pal. Okay. Let, <laughs> yeah. let me tell you. Let me tell you. Because, because like I had really never done that. And I was already in like, I don't know, two, two years, a little over two years. And I was trying to figure out like, because I had cut contact with everybody. Yeah. You know, because some of you still write, some of you want change and you're still writing some of the old people that you really shouldn't be writing. Right. So I had stopped all that. Mm. And so, like, I had, like, I was only had, like, the jail, right? Yeah. So, like, only me and my mom, right? And so, right. in conversations, when I started writing to Ruthie, it was never like, yo, what up, girl? Like, what you look like? Right. Like, it was straight <laughs> scripture. Like, it was a way for right. me to kind of almost preach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm giving mm -hmm. her scriptures. I'm telling her, you know, about her life. You know, right. it's, it's just we built this this friendship. Yeah. Yes. Non-sexual, non like, yo, girls, I'm your right. pick. Like, right. right. None of that. Right. I, I just kind of wanted somebody to share Jesus with. And so that's, we kept it very platonic. I don't know if that's the word, but very sure. platonic. Very, very like, yeah. this is my sister in Christ. And then obviously you start catching feelings and then you get on the phone. But for a long time, it was just like, hey, this is what the Lord, why don't you go read John? This is what I got out of it today. You know, da, 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 da. so that's I'm amazing. saying that because I think sometimes people right. hear that and they're like, yeah, that's yeah. why I need a pen pal. Hook me up. Exactly. Real Vita, hook me yeah, up. It's like, right. no, right. no, just, just that posture of your heart is already showing what you're going to be like when you come out. Seek right. ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Yes. And then yes. all these other things will happen. Yeah. Wow. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Look it's at amazing. the time. It's I know. flown by. And, and I mm. want to get like what you guys are doing now because, you know, who would have ever thought, right? This this broken girl and, and this guy who's just an addict and don't know anything else mm. and the miraculous way that God brought you two together yes. and what you're doing now. And, I, I you know, they know, okay, well, he's, he's a pastor in the church 
is on fire. Oh, I mean, the church you. is amazing. I, I I texted him some weeks ago. I was watching just the little clips and I can feel the presence of God just coming through those clips. And I was like, Juan, this is not your doing. You know, yeah. this is God. Yeah. Like God through you. And I, and I know because ministry, I've been ministry for over 35 years, that oh, it's not without it's a price to pay. It's not without its pain and struggles and climbing the mountains and having to step out in faith. And, um, you know, no, they, people don't know you know, you're fighting battles for them. You're you're putting on that armor, and and under the armor, there's this leprosy. You're coming yeah. home, and and you're yeah. all wounded, and you're all hurt, and they don't know it. Yeah. All you look like is tough and win win, but you're yeah. fighting your own. Yeah. And so, um, a couple of the, those things, um, you know, you guys, it hadn't been perfect. You've had some troubles yeah. with your own family, with finances, with believing. You know, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. All right. Well, when I so so we're like the Hispanic Brady Bunch. So we got six kids. We got six kids, right? I was the rata 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 historia. So you know, we we got a dog named Max too, right? And we don't have an Alice, but we have a Luz that comes every now and then. Okay. So um, interesting enough, you always have to remember this: that let's say everything that what you have today is what you've sown in the past. So you know, I get out. You know, I, now I'm sewing again. Now I've been working, you know, I have four years, I think, in Christianity when I met Ruthie. And boom, we got to figure out even how to, like, I had my singleness, but I always tell men it's easier when you become whole with Christ and she becomes whole with Christ to, like, work on a relationship yes. than trying to build it all. So I'm trying to learn how to be a husband. Uh, I got son of, you know, son to Jesus. And then I'm trying to learn how to be a husband yeah. uh, while learning how to be a father, because I didn't really know. I knew title. I just didn't know how to operate in a role. So my kids all come back into my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was funny because it was just me, her, and her kids. And I used yeah. to say, oh, it's going to be a lot different for you. She wasn't She wasn't understanding because I'm <laughs> going through all these feelings yeah. because I'm dealing with uh, Josh, right. you know, her, yeah. her side of the... So yes. And then when my kids all came, she totally understood, right? It threw us like it's blended atomic bomb. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because everybody's like, yeah. thinks that we're all like, oh, running through the lilies. No. <laughs> no. Both Jonathans connect. They both have drug and daddy issues. So they instantly go start getting high. Oh. So now we got, you know, here, here this is us oh. going like, glory to God, we're wow. going to plan a church. They're all getting high. We're oh, like, man. what is going on? <laughs> She's crying two months. I'm crying two months. You know, yes. it's like, it's like you know, trouble squared. Oh, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. It, we, we had a joke like our first book and I'm sure later maybe we'll get into this but yeah. in my first book to, to get that picture that you see back there that's actually in the back of this one mm -hmm. uh, to get that picture it took forever <laughs> because it seemed like out of the six one was always tripping. Oh. It's like this one was tripping and then the other five would come and then this one was tripping and then this one would be good and it's like domino effect. And yes. so we went through this whole, like, obviously most people, unless you were close to us, thought, you know, because we have the big smile, because yes. we're, we're rooted in Christ. But I mean, we're doing a lot of crying. We're doing, we're, you know, people are like, you don't understand. We're like, what are you talking about? We got yes. three at the same time tripping. Right, you know, yeah. sometimes yeah. it was like three of them. Like my daughter and I was in church and all that. She would be tripping. My son's tripping. You know, all of these things while trying to learn how mm. to be married in Christ, which is totally right. different, right? Because we're not going to get into disagreement and go smoke a blunt. Right. We're not going to get a disagreement and she's going to go have margaritas. Mm -hmm. We're going to get in a disagreement and we're going to actually learn how to talk to each other, mm, right. which, which is foreign. Right. It's yeah. so foreign. When you're in the streets, it, you just want to be heard. You don't yeah, want right. to, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah. Listen right. to what I got to say. Right. right? Yeah. So now, and then you don't see it modeled. Right. right. So we're, we're mm. at, by year three, we're wanting to get a divorce. Right. Mm. We wanted to get it I remember we were like in in the kitchen area, and I I didn't see a healthy marriage. And when I said we came to live in Houston with my dad, I didn't have aunts, uncles. I didn't see a healthy marriage. I went into my first marriage with my own idea of marriage. Then here we are. Gave my life to the Lord. Uh, we were friends for a whole year when He came out, and then we got married. Three, the third year, I wanted quads. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, 
I had to learn how to be a submissive wife. I didn't have anybody that took me under their wing to teach me these things. So at year three, I wanted a divorce. I said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I remember the look that he had on his face. And after a few seconds, he's like, is our marriage not worth fighting for? Now, mind you, at that moment, my whole entire life, that moment is would have been, a def I'm telling you, defining moment. I either would have went back to the streets mm. or ran. Mm. And it would have, because I was married twice with no Jesus. Mm. This is my first time married with Christ. And in those times, when I left, it didn't matter if you dragged yourself on the ground. I, I wasn't that guy. I was just like, I'm out. It was like, I, I could go get, find another one now. You know, that's kind of was my mentality. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, that's probably the first time in my life wow. that I would look at a woman or a situation and say, it was like the words, the Holy Spirit said it and then I caught up. <laughs> but uh, is this love worth fighting for to actually stay? Yeah. Wow. Because that would have been my out. Mm. Yeah, fight or flight. And now you could neither long. fight yeah. or flight. Yes. 100%. You had to stay. Yes. You had to learn. You well, had to totally, grow. because here I have Christ. And at that point, it was so difficult because I had to get I had to get out of this mentality because I used to always tell her, like, man, what do you think? Because so here it is. I come from the hood. Um, I'm selling drugs and doing this stuff. I get saved. Um, I'm walking this out. I'm married now. I'm trying to figure this out, right? I got to learn how to communicate. Can't go to my any of my crutches, yeah. right? Yeah. Can't, right? I don't want to leave the house because I already know if I leave the house, right? So I'm like, stay, but you can't cuss her out, <laughs> you know? So yeah. so I'm trying yeah. to figure all this stuff. And so at this point, my beautiful wife, she's got like a year or something in, right? And she's still like, she's still, you know, in prison, you're like, you hit somebody with the pick, right? Well, I, that's, I go, babe, that's what you, she did to me. She was, she was like sharp. <laughs> so if I was like, man, I'm trying to be, she would just cut me. Mm -hmm. I mean, da, 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 you know, I'm like, and so my whole mindset was, I used to always tell her this, man, I, I, you're making me feel like a punk, mm -hmm. you know? And so she's not, and she, remember, she partied here and there, right? So, but she's still being the one, like if she was from the street, cutting me up. And then I have to not be street. Yeah. And, I, and at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, I got four years of Christ. I, I got to lead my wife to Christ because that's what the Bible says, not what I want to do. Yeah. But that's what it says. Mm -hmm. So I always tell, I, you know, I joke with her, I go, you're one of the greatest disciples of all time. And interesting enough, you know, one day I, I was praying to God to change her and God kind of like chuckled at me, you know, and the, the story goes a little longer, but <laughs> he, he said, what do you want to see in her? And I go, well, I want to see kindness. I want to see gentleness. I want to see. And he's like, okay, then you you need to be that for her. So the word threw me. So when I was trying to make her more gentle, I became more gentle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny how that works, right? Because yeah. I'm thinking like, oh, I'm going to help her be more gentle. Because I thought I'd just pray and then God fixes her. Yeah. But God's like, no, you're in this. So I, it's the word through you. Mm -hmm. It's you through me. You Living know? word. Yeah. I wanted to go back to something you said that yeah. was so critical. It's something that we talk about for, for years of ministry. Like, that pivotal moment. Everybody always says it's got those two or three moments in their life where there's a crossroads. You can go right, you can go left. All day long. And if somebody would ask you, well, what is the most important day of your life? And you're like, the day I got married, the day I went to jail, the day I got baptized or whatever, the day my son was born. Like the moment I decided I'm not going to leave and I'm going to stick it out. And just I'm thinking about the thousands and th tens of thousands of people whose lives are changed because that day mm -hmm. you chose to allow Man. God to disciple you mm. and, and to train you. And, and it's crazy too, because all the days in prison, you're doing your devotional and doing Bible study and learning about the word of God. Like okay. all those moments of prayer call mm -hmm. prepared you for that oh. moment mm -hmm. that determined long. the course of tens of thousands, maybe and hundreds not, I mean, of thousands of lives. And now you're doing marriage conferences. Yeah, yeah. Not on. just at your yeah. church, but traveling yes. all over to do them. Wow. I mean, wow, the, what, what so God powerful. was creating, but there's a price to pay for that. You have there to is. learn it first. Yeah. And so, mm. I mean, that I, I'm so glad that you guys shared that because I, I want the miracle of the marriage for them to see it, that God has somebody for you and you don't know the circumstances in the miraculous, crazy way that God will do it, but he does. But that even something good and God ordained, you must fight for. Oh, yes. all day long. The <laughs> first, I tell people, I go like, some people get out of prison and boom, they wind up at a job, right? Right. 
And so I told him like, that first year is like crucial. And it was probably the hardest time I've ever had in my life. It was so hard. It was so, I know right now everybody sees the, mm. oh man, this guy, you know. Mm. But that first year was like the hardest year. Mm. In my, if, if somebody says, what was ever the hardest year? It wasn't when I was pistol whipped. It wasn't the hardest year in my life was that first year of prison because I, I did. I, so now I had to take everything I learned and I actually had to be mm. led by the spirit into a new truth. Yeah. Okay. Cause, cause sometimes we think, you know, just head knowledge, right? But it's, it's like, like I've learned all this stuff and now like, you know, being, I always tell people, if you lie to yourself, you lie to everybody else. And in that moment, some people get a job. I couldn't get a job. Everywhere I went, I couldn't get a job. I tried to get a job. I tried so hard to get a job. Yeah. It was like every single time. I sat with people where everybody pulled out the application and the three other guys from church, my fellow Christians, they were like, hey, just put that you're not a felon. Yeah. And you're going to get the job. <laughs> okay. So like, I don't want to go sell drugs. Oh. And I and some of the people are already messaging me mm. through Facebook, right? right? They're like, yo, I got bricks of meth yeah. in New York. When you coming? And so I know, in my mind, what I normally do is kind of convince myself that, that I'm just going to do that till I get an apartment and get some furniture. Right. And then yeah. I'll stop. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, before, when I stop, I stop because I'm in prison again. <laughs> right. Right? And so yeah. I'm struggling. Ruthie's working. She, every Friday, she's like, babe, you want to go get something to eat? And I'm like, cringing because I'm like you're going to take care of me again yeah. you know like no I feel this big Yeah, she's feeding me she's taking me to anything fun yet I know she has Josh and she barely is making it and then she's taking care of a grown man it was like it, it's like God broke me to the pieces mm. so I can learn humility Wow. and so, so I'm hearing all this and I'm trying to get jobs and and I, I, I I'm going to Thinking of putting no so I could get the job. And then I hear this, Juan, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Juan, do you really love me? And so then I'm like, oh, so I put, yes, I'm a felon. This guy gets the job. I see it right in front of me. This guy gets the job. And they're all waiting for me over there. And then they go, hey, can I see? And you know the classic. I already mm -hmm. knew. And they go, we'll call you back. Yeah. I already <laughs> oh, knew. Wow. I'm like, oh. Yeah. So they're all like, because they're thinking I put no, I put yes. And then I go to my wife who's newly in Christ. Mm. And I'm like, man, th these three guys got the job, you know. And then, you know, I put no, I put yes that I was a felon. And she's like, why didn't you put no? You know, so now, I, and she don't understand. She's just really wanted me to get a right, job. Right. Right. Yeah, right. And uh, I'm like, no, that wasn't the right thing. But she's also, I think, learning in that process of like, man, what the Jesus, like I'm being an example right. of, of to the best Jesus. Uh, learning all this stuff, I still remember the day. Mm. It was nine months in. Okay, it was nine months. Oh, so let, let me tell you. Before the nine months, you know, you go to the thing, you know, you need a job, but I needed a license or an ID. And I couldn't get the license or an ID without the job, right? Because I needed okay. money. Because they only gave me a hundred bucks and I already spent 20 on Taco well. Bell. So I got 80. <laughs> and then, you know, gas here and there, but I'm broke. Mm -hmm. So now a hundred dollars to change, you know, your life. And so, uh, so I go and I start taking this class because, you know, you got major drug convictions. You got to take a drug class, which I, I probably could have taught. taught, which is kind of funny. The person <laughs> teaching the class, if you're out there, you know, get your game up, you know, but, you know, they're, they're teaching me this class and I'm sitting there yawning because I'm like, no, that's not, you know, I could teach this. Mm -hmm. So I get about four days in and you got to pay 114 bucks. Now remember, they gave me a hundred. So they didn't even give me the 114. They should have given me mm -hmm. 120. Let me sit with six and say, hey, you're going to need that 114. But yeah. they don't mention that. So I get about three days. They say, hey, you got the 114. And I go, $114 for what? They're like the class. So now I got to leave, retake the class and come back with 114. So then I'm, t it's like I'm in this maze. I'm like, so I got to get $114, but I can't get a job because I don't have an ID. Mm. You know, you know oh, and so, so I, I leave. The, that's why I'm saying it was so difficult. Yeah. My, my normal reflexes are, or my normal way is to like, all right, let me sell this real quick because right. I know I could do that. Right. Just so I got to trust God. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I get to this nine month and I'm sitting there and I, there's this guy, you know, and I don't know if he's out there. I can't say his name, but okay. So the guy, he sends me this thing. He's like, look, I got you. And so I have this thought. Okay. I think Ruthie knows a little bit, not the full thought like she's going to hear now. I have this thought. So he sends me and he's like, look, I got you. And I'm like, I, I could have made probably 10 grand really, really fast. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell Ruthie that I'm going to go, I'm going to come back, you know, I'm going to go look for a job. Right. I have this thought. And so I have, you know, the angel and the devil. And I, and so you're listening right now. You're probably going to go through this in some way or some fashion. And so I got them both and I'm hearing 
the enemy kind of talk to me. Yeah. You know, say when you start answering the enemy, you lost, right? Mm -hmm. So, but he's talking and he's like, look, I never done you dirty like this. He goes, this is what God's doing for you. He says, you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. A woman's taking care of you. You, you. I say, he goes, you love her and you can't even take her out. You can't even buy her a glass of tea. He said, I never did that to you. Yeah, you did some prison. Mm -hmm. But look, you're around. And I've always taken care of you. And I'm like almost listening to the thought and the message is coming in through Facebook. Mm. And I'm like, I, that's the part where you're, you're fighting, right? And I hear this still small voice. And it says like, do you trust me? You know, and I, it was so hard to trust them. It was so hard because visibly, like, like I didn't so know hard. I would be where I am now. Like visibly, I'm like, I have nothing. This lady just bought me shoes. And do you trust me? It's nine months in. I can't even get a license. <laughs> like, this is the hardest thing I've had to do. And so I, I kind of go on the side of, yeah, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. So I, open, I took the bed and I opened up all these books because I didn't know how to fight. I, I knew how to fight in prison based upon what was there. Right. But I didn't know how to fight. Mm. So the best thing I did was I filled the whole bed with books and I opened them all and I started reading one line out of each. <laughs> I started reading one wow. line. That's really how I got through it. Wow. And you know, immediately after that day, crazy. a door opened and somebody, that's where I went to the place in Breckenridge and that's where they opened the door and I shared my testimony. They gave me just enough money to go to school. Mm. It was like one wow. step at a time. Come on. Man. But that, 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 that moment. Yeah. Right? Because think about everything I would have missed out on. Yeah. I would have been listening to y'all locked wow. up and upset. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. So you have to allow God to see beyond what you see, Come even on. at the moment. Amen. Mm. There's so much. And we're probably just going to have to have him back to talk about There's some so of the stuff that we <laughs> had wanted to. Yeah, but we doubt. definitely have to talk for a minute about your book and about what God yes. is doing in y'all's ministry right now. So we put up the image there, mm. Prison Break. And um, so I, I ordered it off of Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you were too busy to because send it. Because you were too busy to send it. <laughs> no. Okay. This is the thing. This is the thing. We wanted to give it to him in that box you saw. It's oh. so beautiful. So, <clears throat> beautiful by I way. have awesome. a friend who was making the box for me. Okay. And in that delay, <laughs> I did not want to just send you the book. I wanted to send you the book in the box. And I no. wanted you to get it in the mail and go like. <gasps> so then by the time the box was done, I'm like, we might as well just hand it to him. We're right. going to beat the box. Yes, because you know? I wanted to read it for you got here. So yeah, we no, could no, discuss what was in it. And no, we didn't totally. get to do that. Well, no, I, uh, I, I, he read I, some when he yeah. finally yeah. got it off Amazon. I knew the, that the real knew. reason why you were doing it is because you're working on that New York Times bestseller thing. Come on. <laughs> and and we ordered off Amazon, so I'm good. I am. But what I thought is maybe you you could autograph for me the oh, no, copy totally. bought it's right there okay on oh that what stand. hold yeah. on man <laughs> okay so so let me give you a little preface of the book okay so that everybody kind of understands this ink will be better oh let's do it yeah and talk about the book yeah okay so um prison break the preface of the book is that you know i spent uh 10 years of incarceration um and uh, I like to say 23 years incarcerated, mm. 10 behind physical bars and 23 behind the bars I placed around my heart. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to write something in there right after I say this because I, I want to write a little something. And so, um, so, you know, when I, when I go to the prisons, I always tell the guys, you guys think that when you walk out the door, you're going to be free. I said, but the truth is you were incarcerated before you got incarcerated. Right. And so the reason you can't, I asked somebody yesterday and it was like 90, 95% of the room been incarcerated more than three, four times. Mm -hmm. And so you keep getting incarcerated. You keep going around in circles because of your, of your unbelief. You keep thinking the way you think. And so you wind up in the same place. So if you haven't changed the way you think, that's why I say it starts in prison. Like if you're still thinking right, the way you think. On. Now, fast forward, I become a pastor. I start realizing, you know, when you're in the in prison, even if you don't escape, you always had this conversation at least once, and everybody will agree here. It doesn't matter if you had it a long time ago, maybe after you get concentrated a couple of times, you don't. But in the beginning, you look at the barbed wire and you go, man, I wonder, how would you get out? <laughs> you know, and you start thinking like, I will throw the blanket. And you start thinking all kinds of stuff. You create this whole, everybody's laughing, but you escaped at Scenarios, least once. Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You escaped at least once or twice, <laughs> right? Like, I would jump in here. Oh, no, see that door there, you know? And so you do that a couple of times, especially in the beginning, <laughs> you know? And so everybody's just like stuck and you can't get to the other side. So 
fast forward years later, I start to think, man, I hear people out here who are, man, I wonder what it would like to get on the other side. And so I'm like, man, y'all, most of, most of the people, just because you get out the door, you're not free. Just because you go to the church doesn't make you a Christian. Right. Doesn't make you a follower of Christ, even though community is important. But it doesn't make you a follower of Christ just because you go in the building. So what I started to realize is there was a lot of people incarcerated that are out here. The difference is this. I've never seen somebody when they, when they call your name, let's say you were locked up, Jeremy, and they walk in and say, Jeremy, man, you might even leave pictures. Somebody got to, hey, man, you forgot this because you're out of there. Out here, see, in there, somebody else got the key and you can't get out. But out here, mm. Jesus has opened the door and he's calling your name and you're just sitting there. When you, when there's this whole life of freedom, mm. right? Because I don't even see the free, the, you know, when we were in there, because I heard you say that, you know, the term is, hey, the free world. Yeah. But, but, but the reality is that when I was in there, I was free. You know, people would say, right. man, you're so happy. You're always singing. Man, New York, tone that down. <laughs> tone that down. You're way too happy. You're, lo you're locked up. And I say, I ain't locked up. I'm in college, dude. Come on. I, I would tell them, I'm in college. I'm yes. learning. I'm, I'm about to graduate four years. Bachelor's, mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. You know? Later, I would get my doctorate, which is kind of <laughs> funny. But, you know, I would say these things. And there's a lot of people out here who we say free world, but are actually incarcerated. That's true. Right. They're actually incarcerated. So they're not right. actually free. Because right. there's a lot of people out here. And so the premise of the book is to get you free. So whether you've been, because interesting, I wish that God would have told me this before I wrote the book, but he said, Juan, it's what God's people, we think it's the heathens. Mm. It's God's people that usually he sets free. And somehow they wind up, you know, we talk about the guy that gets locked up again. It's kind of funny, but in church, people get locked up again. Right. Because, because they go, they don't change the way they think. They're, they're not actually free. They haven't been set free by the sun. Right? They have churchianity and not enough Christianity. So the goal here was to do a 21 day with prayer promptings and for you to ask the Holy Spirit. Our bonus chapters are on prayer and fasting. You know, I was like, I, most of the stuff that I've done, like right now for every book we sell, we're giving a book either to somebody in a drug program or a prison. Mm -hmm. So we just covered uh, two women's homes and two men's homes. And I think we got two extra boxes that somebody bought that we're going to put in the prisons. And uh, the thought is, I was like, man, you know, I started the bestseller thing because I wanted to show the world what God can do, right? Like when, when I got the doctorate, when I write the books, it's not really like, I know some people might think, you know, that don't know me like, oh, he's doing all that, you know, all big, you know, but it's not that at all. I really don't want to do it. And when I'm doing it, I feel all insecure. What keeps me going is that I know that it's like a celebrated win for anybody who's been incarcerated. When my marriage work, it's not Come about on. our marriage. It's about your marriage. It's about you biting fruit from the tree. So it's never about the fruit for me. It's about the fruit that you can eat from. So the whole, when I say, man, I want to know you time to sell it, it's because I figure like in prison, I want to show the world of the numbers that we have. And if everybody told their family member to get one book and that happened, it wouldn't be just, oh, it would be like, can you believe it? That guy who was incarcerated that did drugs as a New York Times bestseller? Yeah, it's yeah. like, what? Come so on. it would give hope mm -hmm. yeah. in a way that I believe most people, when it doesn't happen, then they go, oh, yeah, well, I mean, of course he wouldn't because he came out of prison. It's almost the I bendito. But when it, if it happens, then they only know there's only one thing behind that. And there's only one, you know, it's God. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's the hope that I have. I was like, man, if every inmate told a family member to get one book, not only are they free, but we'll be able to give a book. And I go on top of that, the world will see what God can do with, with, with a person that most people would throw away. You know, because when I came out, it was hard just going to a church. It was difficult. Right. I had thrift store clothing. I mean, it was big, tight. I mean, my suits, I literally had to take my pants. This is a true story and kind of tighten it like this. Like if I was doing drugs, because I only found a couple big, big suits. And I wanted to wear a suit because I thought that you had to wear a suit to be like a preacher. You know, mm. I did. Mm. I did. I, I just thought so. <laughs> so I tied it and I'm a big old suit hanging up to here. And I thought, you know, and people were seeing that. And rather than give, you know, I always laugh at Ruthie. I go, man, girl, how did I get you? She mm. goes, I, I think she had this revelation. She's like, look, I get her my haircut and some clothes. He good. Because <laughs> you can't get character. Yeah, but, but she basically right. went off of character. Yeah, you can't man. get character at Walmart. Come on. Right? So she's like, I could dress him up. The outside part is easy. What, he, yeah. what he's got inside is what I'm looking for. Right? Yeah. And so we laugh about it now. Man, but, you know, I, I, I just really think that if everybody, every single person 
to the family member, I think it would it would make the why scratch their heads. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say real quick, while you're talking about being in the waiting room, applying for a job, and those two guys are checking no, never been convicted of a felony, yeah. and you're checking yes yeah. mm -hmm. of the tortoise and the hare. You know, yeah. and that rabbit's yeah. running off and the tortoise is slowly like just doing it methodically, right? Yeah. But I would hazard to say without even knowing, those guys don't have books that are being sold, maybe going to be a New York Times bestseller yeah. and, and doing all the things because you did it the right way and your character was more important than the temporary circumstance yes, or whatever. Yes, sir. Amen. So usually we close with a word, uh, you know, from yeah, our yeah, guests. And so uh, we'll have Miss Ruthie go first. Okay. If there's anything you want to say to the gals, you know, and the guys that are watching anything that, you know, God puts on your heart. Um, yes, um, definitely. It's important that you understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Because when you identify with Christ Jesus, your life changes. And not just that, but you know who you are. And that's so important in your walk with the Lord. And just know that you were created in the image of God and you are a masterpiece and God loves you. You are special. And he has something for you to do that only you can do. Amen. So always understand who you are in Christ Jesus. That's yeah. very important for your walk. Amen. And then pastor, and then when you're done, go ahead and lead us in prayer. Awesome. Okay. So obviously I don't, I was thinking here and I was like, man, do I just go? Cause you know, like you, you know, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to go, you know, the book of James or Luke 10, 41, 42. Cause it's been like my thing lately, the Martha and Mary. Um, but, but I really, I want to leave you with this word. Cause last week I feel like, um, I got to talk to this guy. I finished the thing. And, you know, you think after you finish the thing, you check out and you clocked out and you walk away. But, you know, I like to catch things that are still there. And there was this gentleman who was sitting. And um, I winded up talking to him. And, and I feel like this word is for you right now. And the talk with him was, he said, man, I wasn't going to show up today. And I came and you started talking about if you lie to yourself. Mm. you'll lie to everybody else. Because I was telling the guy, there was this guy, he had been a week and this light bulb got him really angry. And so I told the guy in front of everybody, I said, you want to go get high? And so he's like, I don't want to go get high. I go, yeah, no, no, you want to get high. I said, you said this little thing got you really upset. You're looking for something to actually, uh, you could say, well, it's because of this. And so you left. But the leaving had nothing to do with the leaving. It's so you going back to your old way of life. Because you only got a week in, right? Mm -hmm. And so... I think we always lie to ourselves. Like I used to say that, like, oh, I'm just going to go there for a little bit. Knowing mm. deep inside, mm. right? So when they say, how are you still clean 16 years later? Like, how, how are you still in prison? I go, I don't lie to myself. Like, I know whether it's a female, whether it's a place or a thing, I, I have to be honest with myself. Not saying perfect, because sometimes you get a stupid thought or you wind up getting close. But if you're always honest to yourself, you won't fully go in. So my word to you is do not lie to yourself. Be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Be quick to listen to what God has to say about whatever decision or choice you're going to make while you're in prison and when you get out especially. Because if you keep lying to yourself, you're going to wind up manipulating yourself to keep right. doing the things that you always did. Right. 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 So that could be you writing a letter right now. Mm -hmm. To a girl that you know is still getting high, but you don't want to get high no more, cut that letter. Right. right. Cut that letter. Right. Hey, you can't save her. Right. Nobody can save you, right? Because right. remember, your A game, your A game, like the night, your your best idea got you in prison. Right. Yeah. That's, that was your A game. Yeah. Right? So if that was your A game, I, I might as well lean to the wisdom of God, right? Yes. Because yes. his A game is to keep you out. Amen. Yep. So Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, so much for this program. I'm so grateful for Jeremy and Eve and uh, pastors. You know, I just feel like they're pastors. They pastor so many people. And uh, I'm very grateful, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives, all the lives they're impacting. And Lord, I just pray that you would point out maybe something that, that we at times might be lying to ourselves when we know the truth. And let us have knowledge of that truth so that we may be free in every area of our life. Lord, be the indicator that shows us when our tank is empty and when shows when something that shows us when things might be going wrong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.